Hi and welcome to this KX introductory workshop. My name is Michaela and I'll be your instructor for the duration of these videos. As you can see I'm sharing my screen here and what I'm sharing is our sandbox environment. Now you can get your very own sandbox environment too. What you need to do is click on the link that says launch KX sandbox from the KX Academy page where you navigated to these videos from. You'll notice I'm in private browser mode and I would recommend you do the same. So choosing either private or incognito browser mode, um, that will just mean you have a better, cleaner sandbox experience. Um, once you click on that link, it will take a few minutes to load. And once it's loaded, you'll see something like what I have here. So we are gonna do the course today on Jupyter and we'll be using Jupyter Notebooks as our educational training tool. I've got five notebooks. We're gonna start off looking at QSQL, which is Q's table query language. Then we're going to move on and look at joins and in particular we'll be focusing on some commonly used table joins within Q. Then we look at some data structures within Q, also functions and some best practices around user-defined functions within Q. And then we'll finish up loading, looking at loading data and inter-process communication. So I'm just going to open up one of these Jupyter Notebooks um, and to point out some housekeeping tips before we get started. So once it's opened, you'll notice at the top right hand side, it's telling you what kind of kernel you have running in the background. So I'm running a Q kernel here. Um, you can see that when I click on a code cell here, that's how I know um, that's a code cell, that's a markdown cell. And whenever it's code, it's saying it's Q code. If I had a different kernel, so for example, Python, some of you may be familiar with using Jupyter with Python, um, you could change a kernel to be that here. But we're learning Q today, so I'm gonna leave it as it is um, set to Q. Um, the next thing to point out is this command at the beginning is going to load in our data that we're going to need for the rest of the module. So I'm going to hit run on that and that's basically going to load in our database that we need. Um, it's worth pointing out as well that your kernel may die. That can happen sometimes um, and you might just need to at certain points hit kernel restart and anytime you do a kernel restart just make sure to navigate to the top of your notebook and rerun this loading in step here. Um, and that will set you right. Um, you'll notice I hit the run button there. You do have options to use some keyboard shortcuts. Um, so if you click help on this button here, you'll see the, the suggested shortcut that you need to use. So for me, it's control enter to run a cell. And um, for you, it might be something different. There's loads of loads of uh, shortcuts here. I'm not that adept at them. <laughs> I generally stick to control enter and then I'll use these for doing other things like adding a new cell, etc. But whatever your preference is, go for it. Um, I also want to point out we have a content section just hidden with this button. So feel free to show that. Um, and you can also navigate to specific se sections that you're interested in um, as well. And you can get a sense of how far along the content you are by looking at that. I'll just hide it so that we've got a bit more screen uh, space as we're going through um, the content. Um, some other things to note, I'll have a lot of links in the notebooks as we go and that's going to bring you to our co.kx.com website which is our documentation site for all things Q and KDB. So I would highly recommend anytime you see a link just pause the video and go and do some additional reading. There's a much more comprehensive description of any um, keywords or anything that comes up um, and also to keep up to date with the latest releases and the latest terminology and, and um, documentation that's all on co.kx.com. As you go down the notebook, you'll also see these little icons. So these are our QBs. So you guys are all our QBs, which is basically our Q newbies. Um, so welcome, it's great to have you on board. Um, so this little guy is supposed to be uh, your little friendly helper. And he's basically adding in some additional context or some top tips um, to some of the statements and code as we go down. So do keep your eyes peeled for him. Um, also, we have this show solution button. Um, so quite often we'll pose a question um, and we'll hide the solution just to give you some time to stop and think about what you think it might be. Um, and then when you're ready, you can go and hit the show solution button to see what that might be. You can see there it's a mixture for me on this one of markdown and code and, and code cells, um, which might be the case. So just be aware of that. Um, we do use that a lot for our exercises. So you'll see interspersed along the notebook we have a lot of exercises. So when these come up, I'll generally just say, pause the video, um, go and try the exercise yourself. Um, and then you can come back to the video once you're happy with the solution. Um, you do have this option to check the output. So if you're not too sure of what the, the output is, just from what the question's asking, you can, you can check what the expected output is here. 
Um, and then once you're happy with your solution, you can click the show solution button to see what we would recommend. Um, you can obviously just hit the show solution button at the beginning and cheat, but we would recommend you do have a go with questions. You really get more out of the workshop um, and you have a better learning experience that way. Um, yes, so a few more things just to mention briefly. I did say that you should use private browser mode um, when using the sandbox. One of the reasons for that is this um, environment will only be persisted for 24 hours so after which point it will disappear and when you try and reconnect you'll be getting a new sandbox which basically means all of your changes if you've made any code changes um, and if you've answered any solutions they will have disappeared so what I would recommend is when you're finished working on a notebook um, and say you're done for the day you can just come here hit file download as and then you can select the the notebook um, format and then the next day or tomorrow or you know if you come back in a few weeks you can come here and hit upload and then you can upload your own version of notebook um, and that basically will allow you to keep your changes um, and come back to them at a later point and um, finally i'll just mention at the end of the course we do have um, an optional quiz and uh, certificate so basically we ask you to fill in a few questions and then also do a short quiz on the concepts that we um, expressed in this workshop and um, so we'd really love your feedback on that um, for everyone to try it out and um, you will get a certificate in your mailbox with a little link um, to add that accreditation to your social media profiles and um, so hopefully that will encourage everyone to try it out um, and I think that's all our housekeeping done let's get on with some Q learning and I'll see you in the next video where we'll be diving into QSQL.